we have to change the society how they think they think that crime is associated with only men for this reason we are here there was no one who talks about men's issues in the us the men's rights movement is largely contained within online fringe hate groups who maybe meet once a year but in india the men's rights activism movement has sort of grown into its own legitimate political platform It's no secret that India has a history of laws, traditions and cultural attitudes that are deeply patriarchal. One area in particular that has been detrimental for women has been the practice of dowry. Dowry is an antiquated tradition where the family of the bride makes payments to the family of the groom. It was technically outlawed in 1961 but continues undeterred to this day. And every year thousands of women are abused and murdered over dowry disputes. In the 80s, stricter anti-dowry harassment laws appeared in India, and a men's rights movement began to form in reaction to them. And in the last few years, the movement has gained huge momentum following a surge of anti-rape and anti-sexual assault legislation. In the case of rape, death has been prescribed as a maximum punishment. Under these new laws, some men are claiming that false accusations from women are making them unfair targets, including Vineet who has recently been attending men's rights meetups after his wife filed abuse charges and took custody of their daughter yeah. can you describe the cases that are on you right now there are six cases yeah uh, one is 498a the dowry harassment yeah dowry harassment you okay. said 323 which is causing harm 377 okay. that is unnatural sex carries a uh, imprisonment of 10 years okay so it's all on on her testimony that She says that I had unnatural sex with her, mm, okay. so I can be arrested any time. The first complaint was put by me. She did not put the first complaint. I made the first complaint to the police. And what was the complaint you made? Uh, that my daughter was with my parents-in-law, and uh, I wanted to meet my daughter. They refused me. Okay. So the police intervened, and the first time it was uh, not no trouble for you, and you got your daughter back. I got my daughter back, but then, uh, as a revenge, you may say, mm. they just. got all those cases on me my wife left me on 23rd of august 2017 yeah she mm-hmm. left with my daughter so you have not seen her since mm-hmm. okay so before this were you very gung ho about uh, men's rights in general uh no i protested for women mm-hmm. i myself has pro- protested for rights of women so you would consider yourself to be a feminist because I, feminist i was is- a feminist until i knew that even the men can have problems I wasn't sure if Vineet was guilty or not. But it's true that since these gender equality laws have been put into place, there have been a handful of false accusations. And it's these specific false cases that have galvanized the men's rights movement. They craft a narrative that says the system is being rigged against them in the name of female empowerment. And looking to men's rights organizations around the world, it's pretty clear the formula to start a movement find men who might very well be falsely accused draw them together under this banner of brotherhood then convince them that they're victims because feminism has gone too far and that men are second class citizens the biggest men's rights organization in india is the save indian family foundation or sif and its founder is anil kumar even though the guys in the united states don't see what's really happening in india but we are always looking at united states Anil has specifically looked to theories and tactics perpetuated by the controversial US men's rights leader Paul Elam to fuel his own movement back home in India. We have to cut through and use the media in a culture that doesn't care about men. And like those US organizations, SIF is known for publishing anti-feminist material. SIF is the umbrella group for men's rights organizations in India, which Anil claims to have over 200,000 members. They're actually running a political candidate in a local election, which has been the focus of Anil's work for the past couple of months. We met up with him in the midst of a rally. So, what is exactly happening here? Today we started. We just okay. started the campaign in this last couple of days. So, Anil, yes. uh, you are the president and founder of the Save Indian Family Foundation. Mm-hmm. Uh, why did you decide to go go about this? Yeah, some amount of expression of you know men being falsely accused or men facing domestic violence, okay. men being harassed uh, in a relationship with women or being in a marital problem. Uh, nowadays, we use internet. How is it different? 
some of these guys made that breakthrough that you know they are not ashamed in terms of sharing their experiences okay. Okay. with judicial system or family problems. But the people who are at the forefront of the men's rights movement, they are very vocal about women's roles in society. Women shouldn't vote, they should stay in the kitchen. And that's a legit thing that is, that's, that's a narrative that's uh, out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean... It's not a fringe. No, I mean, I mean, I mean tell, I'll tell you what. Uh, the main base is not that. You know, when you say patriarchy or male privilege, yeah. we think that it is not as simple as a, if you are a man, you are privileged or you are powerful. But they would be powerful in comparison to women, like what women have had we, to We face. dispute that. Okay. On an average, we, we, we dispute that. Since the troubles with his wife started, Vineet has been attending weekly SIF meetings to get advice. So, how did you find out about SIF? I was desperate to get some justice, so I googled it. We are very one of the few people who are working for the men's rights. So at this point, SIF is practically all you have? Yeah, because for a layman like me, I'm not having any knowledge of the law. Hmm. I've never been to a police station before. SIF has given me that confidence to at least speak up. For starting, there is a very vulnerable condition at this time, as per now. If we take a case of Shami's case, then we declare that he was a rapist. Or he was there is a SIF meeting and we have a forum of men who claim that uh, they, have, they are being harassed by the women they are separated from. So it's like an AA meeting but like aggrieved husbands. And how much she is demanding? Sir, she has uh, given me a list of 92 lakhs rupees. 92 lakhs? Yes. So they have forged some documents. That's why there was so much abuse of law. This chapter of SIF is run by Rupenshu Pratap Singh, whose primary job is to give legal advice to men who are in the midst of marital court cases. On a daily basis, we men record this biasness in our society. So you're working against biased laws? There were more than 40 laws which are for women. Okay. There was none, uh, not a single law which were... were but women do face violence per capita far more than men. Uh, who said that statics? If you check about the NCRB data, mm -hmm. you'll find it, what is the true states and what are not. But in general, violence in general, against you women... You are saying in general because you have seen only the one face of a coin. Even this side of the coin seems very biased and anecdotal. While there may, may be enough men to mm. fill in a room, mm. Mm. like the number of women who have faced something like this, like I, I'm pretty sure it could fill up this block. You can't say that women are 100% legitimate. According to the National Crime Records Bureau, there are actually over 330,000 crimes against women in India every year. What's worse is that due to underreporting and lack of access, violence against women is actually much higher than what the national crime statistics show. It's common for men's rights movements to deny statistics and data that speak to the gravity of issues facing women to discount the need for laws that are designed to protect them. I met with Supreme Court lawyer Karuna Nandi, who has been a champion of women's rights in India, to get her take on the matter. There's a pervasive sense of victimhood, mm -hmm. which is very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that sense of victimhood comes because they misunderstand feminism as being women against men, men yeah. rather than people against patriarchy, yeah. which is what it mm -hmm. is. They believe that uh, a lot of laws like uh, the dowry laws and the domestic violence laws are framed in such a way that men are immediately considered as the perpetrators and never the victims. Look, that's just a widespread myth, partly created by these men's rights associations. Whether it's rape law, whether it's any criminal law, mm -hmm. you know, the burden of proof is very much on the prosecution. Look, any system has false positives and false negatives, of course, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The false positive is when somebody who is innocent mm -hmm. is dragged through the criminal justice system, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, the false negatives in our systems are much greater, mm. much, much, much greater uh, than the false them... positives. Every single law is misused to a degree. Just because it's misused just don't, doesn't mean that it shouldn't be there, you yeah, know? We have yeah. to address the misuse, mm -hmm. right? I met up with Vineet as he arrived at the police station to give his testimony, fearing that he'd be arrested on the spot. So if you're put in jail, will SIF members come and help you out? Sir, I guess they are the only hope that I'm having right now. Okay. So let's hope for the best. 
So when I was told about this guy, I thought he would be a proper men's rights activist, like, you know, all women suck. He's definitely mixed up with the men's rights movement, but he's just a guy who's in trouble and uh, he's doing what he can to get his daughter back. We waited for nearly four hours while Vineet was in the police station. Despite his fears, he was let go for the day. And though he'll have to return for a formal trial, his chances are good since the conviction rates for any of these crimes is extremely low. Are you feeling better about this? I'm very this? relaxed now. Yeah, for yeah, I, was, I was scared, I was scared. I, I, yeah. I didn't knew the sequence of events was so harsh on yeah. me. On one hand, I sympathize with guys like Vineet, but I also see the threat that SIF and the men's rights movement here poses to the progress of much needed women's rights. So these laws that you see as gender biased, they have sort of started like this war between the genders. Yeah, it is unfortunate, but we do believe that it has led to a so-called gender war. There are a lot of victories, which I will call feminist victories. There are a lot of victories. When you have got a lot of victories, you have to bring grace. Every victory, if somebody gets more bloodthirsty, then it scares men. Okay. It's troubling to see how a handful of cases, whether they're justified or not, could be driving such a loud minority of men's rights activists in a country like India. And the men's rights movement isn't showing any signs of slowing down. Earlier this year, they successfully campaigned against a law that would finally outlaw marital rape in India. And though Anil's candidate lost his election, SIF garners dozens of new members each day, and they plan to field five new candidates in Delhi's assembly elections next year. 